these to make the lighting behind me kind of yellow, but like I don't really like them off as much. I don't know. We'll we'll play with it. Hello lovely people, my name is Nicole and last week was the Rainbow Fawn. I posted my TBR on Twitter, I didn't really feel like I wanted to make a whole video for it, but I am making a video for my wrap up. So the goal of the Rainbow Fawn, if you are not aware, is to read six books within the week and your books can either be one from every color of the rainbow, not counting indigo, or you can choose six books of all one color. I chose to do the six books of six different colors and while I didn't quite get through all six, I got through about five plus some. Starting off with my red book, I chose I Crawl Through It by A.S. King. It has a lovely red spine. The cover is has some red, but it's not as red. Uh, this is the one that I didn't quite get all the way through. I got about 50 pages. It's right there, so you can see my bookmark. I'm enjoying it so far, and I did start it, and this has been one that's been sitting on my shelf for a little while. So I do feel good about the fact that I was able to at least start this one and hopefully I will finish it sometime within the next week. Then for my orange book I read The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth and I loved this. It was so so good, heartwarming and heartbreaking in different ways and this was one of those books that made me feel so much. I got so angry on Cameron's behalf so many times. I wanted to just step into the story and give her a hug and slap some people upside the head. Uh, also this was a really interesting one to read because the primary uh, conflict in this is between sexuality and religion and I'm currently taking a class on religion and queer politics. So while I was reading in this book about people being like, you can't be gay because the Bible says so, I was also taking a class in which I learned that basically everything in the Bible about sexuality is just kind of open to interpretation and a lot of the direct references didn't actually get put into the Bible until the 50s. So that just made me even more angry at some of the characters in this. I loved it though. I gave it five stars. It was an absolutely incredible read. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I 100% understand why it is considered to be kind of a staple of the LGBT book genre. Then for my yellow book, I read Boy Most Likely To by Hentley Fitzpatrick. This is sort of a companion-y, sequel-y kind of thing to The Boy Next Door by Hentley Fitzpatrick and I loved that book. I haven't read it in year and a half, two years, something like that. Um, and I think that there were a number of things that I would have enjoyed more about this book if I'd read it more recently. But that being said, I still really liked this. I think that I definitely would have appreciated some of the appearances uh, of the main couple from the previous book more if I sort of skimmed through that, but I didn't have it with me at college. So I had to make do, but this book did do a really good job of sort of summarizing um, at least the characters that you need to know from the last book and I was able to sort of pick out pieces that I sort of remembered fairly well and so I was able to enjoy this quite a lot. I loved the main characters. I thought they were so fantastic. One of the main characters is struggling with aftermath of addiction. He was an alcoholic and none of the plotline is about him getting sober. He's already sober but I thought it was really really well done how it dealt with the aftermath of addiction and how even once you're clean and you've been sober for a while like it's not something that just goes away you still have to deal with it you still have to you know keep living with this and I thought that was done really really well also it managed to incorporate one of my least favorite storylines of all time uh, and not make me hate it if you read this it is a uh, Cal's storyline that I don't want to spoil anything, but if you've read this, you'll know who Cal is and you'll know what storyline it is. Normally, I hate storylines like that. Anything having to do with that kind of thing ugh, freaks me out. Can't do it. But I absolutely loved it in this one and that really, really impressed me. I gave it four stars. Then my green book was The Accident Season by Mar Moira. Fowley Doyle and this was one that I enjoyed. I didn't absolutely love it but I did like it more than I thought I would. In the very beginning there was a plot point that I was like oh are they gonna go there? Please tell me they're not gonna go there and then they kind of went there and I was 
little kind of annoyed by that and that is sort of the main romantic plot line but there was sort of a romantic subplot line that I was really interested in that I didn't really feel like got a good resolution uh, maybe I was just missing something because I got really really confused near the end of this book but I just it felt like it was kind of just left in the air and that was really annoying because I was actually really interested in that romantic plot line also uh, like I said I got really confused near the end I still am not quite 100% sure on how everything was resolved and like if things are going to continue to keep happening if things are supernatural or not I'm not sure ah uh, they were explaining things and things were kind of just going over my head and getting muddled and confused but Overall, I did enjoy this. I really liked the writing style and the characterization, so I gave it 3.5 stars. Um, it was definitely an enjoyable read, but I just did have a number of problems with it. And then my blue book is really sort of a black and blue book, um, but that is The Princess, the Scoundrel, and the Farm Boy by Alexander Bracken. This is a retelling of A New Hope. Star Wars is my shit. I love Star Wars so much, and so when I found out an author that I absolutely adore was writing an adaptation of the story I love, it made me so happy and I had to get it as soon as possible. I didn't get it as soon as possible, it took me a while, but um, I, I'm really happy I have this and I'm really happy I read this. It was one of those things that just fills me with warm fuzzies and makes me smile and it was really cool because the story is told from Leia's perspective, then Han's perspective, and then Luke's perspective, which is interesting because in the movies we really mainly only see from Luke's perspective. I mean we see scenes with the others without Luke, but like the main story is told from Luke's perspective. So we got a number of information tidbits and like emotions that we didn't really get to see before from the other characters. Also there is some absolutely stunning art in here at the beginning of each character shift. Um, that's the one just at the very beginning with Leia. Absolutely beautiful. I loved this. I gave it four stars. And then my purple book was If You Could Be Mine by Sarah Farzan. This was my first book that I read for this readathon, and wow, um, intense read. There were a number of times where I got really frustrated with the main character, just because I understood why she was doing what she was doing and why she felt like she had to do what she was doing, but it was still really frustrating, just because from an outside perspective, I could see that what she was doing wasn't the right thing. And it was that kind of frustration where, like, I 100% get why she's doing it, I just don't agree with it, which makes it even more frustrating because you can't just yell at the character for being stupid. It was a good kind of frustrating. I also really liked that the book didn't feel like it was trying too hard to fit into like the perfect story, if that makes any sense. Like it didn't try too hard to subscribe to any of the tropes or like this has to happen in order for this story to be a complete story for, you know, happy fairy tale ending kind of thing. It felt very, like, real. Um, and it was just a really interesting look into another culture that I'm not very familiar with that was absolutely fascinating about a topic that I'm really interested in, this sort of queer politics kind of thing. I loved this so much. I gave it 4.5 stars. Alright, so this is my book Rainbow for the Rainbowthon, kind of minus the red, but um, here is most of a rainbow that I completed. I am fairly happy with how well I did. Um, I do wish that I had finished I Crawl Through It uh, over the weekend, but on Saturday and Sunday I had a number of other things going on. Uh, my roommate and I went and saw Deadpool and then made brownies on our lovely Valentine's Day date, so I wasn't able to finish that last book. But that's okay, you know, life happens, and I still think I did a pretty good job. If you participated in the Rainbow Fawn, please let me know how you did in the comments. I love you, and I will see you later. Bye!